Welcome to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DB, DJ Rain, and my guest today is artist, producer, and engineer, Fifth Child. So when we come back, we're going to find out just a little bit more about him. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV, DJ Rain, and I'm sitting here with Fifth Child. Fifth Child, how are you doing? I'm great, man. How are you? Good, man. I'm glad to have you on the show today. Mm -hmm. um, before we kind of get into the things that you have going on, tell me a little bit about actually who makes up Fifth Child as an artist, producer, and some of the many hats that you wear. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was um <clears throat> I'm 26 years old, um, born in Redondo Beach, California, but I've been living in Jackson uh, since I was about two or three years old. So I just claimed Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, went to Murrah High School, graduated from there, went to Loyola University in New Orleans, and uh, majored in PR, minor in music business. And uh, at Loyola was well, right before I went to Loyola was really when I became like a true recording artist. I had been um, recording like on cassette tapes and everything mm -hmm. with my brother before then but uh, right around the age of 17 was really when I started taking it seriously and so became a true recording artist. So like around that time, around that age, what what was it that kind of propelled you in that direction to say alright this is you know this is kind of what I want to do you know professionally? Well um, like I said I, I wrote my first song when I was 11 years old mm -hmm. and um, then I, w I would just, you know, find my favorite hip-hop songs, and I'd be like, okay, well, if I had a guest feature on this song, what would I say, you know? Right. And so that's how I really started writing. And um, and my brother uh, was really w who influenced me to, you know, start writing, because he was, you know, rapping at the time, and he does again now. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I always looked up to him, but then um, when I was about, I don't know, maybe 15 years old or 16, he quit. He just, you know, stopped doing it all together. And so I was like, well, dang, you know, you're the reason why I started. Mm -hmm. So uh, when he quit, that's when I, I was like, well, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because this is like my my segue into hip hop, you know, through right. him. So, uh, but I, I met a really good friend of mine in 10th uh, in grade. And, um, and we started making music together. And from then, that's really when I started taking it seriously again. So we had really, really cheap, like, recording equipment I mean like the computer mic right you know the mic that come in yeah. like sound recorder mm -hmm. on the computer you know what I'm saying so it was like all ground level at first but the passion was always there the writing was always there and uh, yeah the music was always in me so now one thing I do find like really really impressive about you and your career so far is the number of solo albums that you have mm -hmm. out and how many is that uh, the new one will make six six yeah okay. Um, what inspired you to 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 do the first one, the first album? The first album, you know, I made it because I wanted an album that I could just play all the way through. Mm -hmm. You know, I made it really for myself to listen to. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I mean, I was buying a lot of CDs at the time. We're talking like two thousand um, two thousand five. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. January 2005 yeah. was when the first album was released. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, you had to think, like, you know, Jay-Z was my favorite rapper, and, you know, he had quit in 2003, you know, mm -hmm. after the Black Album. And there was, it was, like, just not a really, really great time in, in hip-hop, you know, mm -hmm. around 05. And so uh, so I wanted to make some music that I, a CD that I could play all the way through. Right. And, you know, I liked the stuff that I wrote, so I made my album for me. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, eventually, you know, more more people wanted to hear it. I started passing around to some friends at church, you know, and and that's it. Pretty much went from there. So, what was the what was like the like the motivation behind that first? I mean, because like your first big project like that can be. I mean, I mean that's. I'm sure you remember that just like you remember stuff that goes on yet like yesterday. 
Yes, well, yes and no, you know, because it didn't really feel like the first one because, remember, I had been making music for, right. you know, some time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, leading up to that, you know, just like uh, my brother and I would rap over mixtape beats and stuff, you know, like I said, we were recording on the cassette tapes, yeah. so, you know, that's like a training ground for, you know, right. for an artist because if you mess up, there's no, you know, punch-ins, there's no nothing. If we're rapping together on a song and one of us messes up, we have to rewind the tape right. and start all the way back over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, that really, really helped me as a recording artist as far as, like, sticking stuff the first time. And so when I actually put together this collection of music, um, it, it was the my first official solo album, but I had done, you know, mm -hmm. I had done projects before then. Though. I got you. Now, you know, going back to saying... Mm -hmm. um, your brother was, you know, a big influence, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I read that, you know, you have the influence, you know, with Jay Z, um, Outkast, um, even Ti. Um, who can you say is kind of dominates the influence on you as far as like your music goes and style? Well, do you just mean hip hop? Because as far as hip hop, those are my biggest influences. But uh, no, it, in general, period. Um, I would have to really give a lot of uh, a lot of props to Curtis Mayfield. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's one artist as far as like um like black love and self love and, and social consciousness. Like I got all of that out of uh out of Curtis Mayfield's music. I got you. Yeah, I was a really, really big fan of his. Um <clears throat> so now, you know, now that you're working on your sixth album, um, kinda get kinda give us an idea of exactly what you do besides being an artist. because um, I know like you're a producer mm -hmm. and um among other things. Right, yeah, I, uh, so, wait, I don't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. That? Um, you know, like, you're you're an artist, and you're a producer, and you're right. also a sound engineer. Is there anything else that you dabble in um, as far as entertainment goes? As far as entertainment, no, mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, I will edit mm -hmm. my own, like, promo videos right. if I absolutely have to. It, most of the stuff besides... Um, Besides just writing, you know, which I was going to do anyway, everything else was kind of out of necessity. Mm -hmm. like as far as the production and the engineering, you know, I didn't have the money to, you know, to pay producers. And plus, I was always really um, drawn to, to producers, and I really always liked beats, and I was always interested in them and, like, sampling and stuff. So I just got into it from that. And also, like I said, because I couldn't buy beats from anybody else, and I had to learn how to record myself. So, yeah. Um, That's how I ended up doing so, so, Okay, people. that was my next question. Right. So you did, you were, you were kind of self-taught on the production side of yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what are you working on right now? You, I, I know it's the sixth, the sixth album. Mm -hmm. um, what's the name of that album? Uh, the name of the new project is Love Letters and Suicide Notes. Love Letters and Suicide Notes. How long have you been working on that? Hmm. Uh, not that long. Maybe... Um, Maybe about three or four months. Mm -hmm. Now, what? How? How does it differ from like your previous projects that you put out? This this is my baby. Like really, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I love it. Um, as far as the the writing process, I started with the production. You know, all together. Like I normally start. You know, I normally make the beats first. But with this project, everything was much more focused. I knew from from the get. I already knew what the title was going to be. I knew exactly uh, the types of um, instrumentals that I wanted to make, everything. I wanted the whole album to have a certain kind of mood, mm -hmm. you know, because before I had been so used to just write, a song, write some verses, write some hooks, you know, put it on the beat and be done with it. Mm -hmm. But this time, I wanted, it's much more caretaking in everything. I added bridges. I wanted it to be a lot more um, musical. So, I mean, there's a lot of live instrumentation on the album. Mm -hmm. uh, I went back and, and tweaked everything, just just taking more care right. into the uh, entire project as a whole, and even the marketing afterwards. You know, instead of just making songs and then a week before I release it, say, "Hey, everybody, I'm about to put an album out next week. Here you go." Like I had a seven-week marketing strategy leading up to mm -hmm. this album release. That's you know, it's all inclusive and all very calculated. Nice. Much more than anything. Well, I'm going to hear more about that. We're going to take a small break. Okay. We're running out of time, but. I do want to hear more about that and some of the other stuff that you have going on. Make sure that you stay tuned and we'll be right back with Fit Child. Exposure TV is produced by Peaches, host and producer of On Location TV. Dead 
Def Tell DJs. Def Tell DJs. For more inquiries on today's guest, Fifth Child, a recording artist, producer, and audio engineer, email fifthchildmusic at gmail.com or chat with him on Twitter at Fifth Child Music. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm sitting here with Fifth Child, and we were just talking about album number six. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me about tell me the name again of the of the album and kind of the origin of that. Sure. Uh, well, the title of the album is Love Letters and Suicide Notes, mm. and it's based on uh, these three themes. Uh, the first one is that I feel like um, those are the two most intense types of writing, and when someone sends them to a recipient with the intent of going through with it, then there's no turning back. Like you can't take your love away from somebody if you really right. feel that way. And, and secondly, you know, if you commit suicide, you know, it's over. So there's no turning back. You know, mm -hmm. that's the first principle. Um, the second one is uh, like I'm I'm a Gemini, and I have these Gemini mood swings about once a month, where you know I'll be feeling on top of the world. You know, everything with music, I just be really inspired, and you know, people are really responding well to the music and. And then just out of nowhere, one day out of a month, I just get really ridiculously discouraged. You know, I may see a video on MTV Jams of a terrible artist, and I'm like, man, like, I feel like I'm working so hard to, to get to this point. And, you know, and not, not even out of jealousy, but just, you know, I just want more. You know, I right. want my music to, to catch on. And I just get really discouraged to the point where I want to quit. Right. And like I said, that happens once a month, and then it's gone. But you know, I mean, I, I think that happens with a lot of them. I mean, that frustration. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, you seem to be doing a really well job of managing that. You know, that that frustration because we all get it, and we're all going to go through it. Yeah, it comes out in my music, but not too much in my interactions with people. But right. if you listen to the music, it's definitely there. And uh, so the third principle, though, is um, the entire album takes uh, a three-part narrative approach. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's all based around this three-part narrative where um, it starts off with a guy who's in love with this girl and she breaks his heart. So, you know, just like like in any other situation now, every, every woman has to pay for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He turns into a heartbreaker. He turns, you know, he just treats women however mm -hmm. because, you know, he felt like he was done wrong. So this is his act of bitterness this right. is how you know his expression of it and so uh he basically lives h-o-e i h-o-e ish you know right and uh so then after all that he meets a girl that he actually falls in love with again and wants to he wants to marry this girl you know what i'm saying but now he has to answer for his past he has to answer for the reckless past that he had mm -hmm. you know and so in order for uh, for him to get married to her, the pimp in him has to die. So the last song in the uh, of the album is actually called R.I.P. to the Pimp, where it actually walks you through those three different stages in this person's life. And um, at the end, he finds his forever. And he, before he can marry this girl, when he says his I do's, that the pimp in him has to die or commit suicide. That's that's pretty deep right there. <laughs> <laughs> where I mean, like, where did it, where did that inspiration come from? I mean, from that, I mean, that's. That whole story. Man, it's, it's, really, um, it's really God. I'm going to just be honest with you. Uh, because, like I said, I had the, the title just came to me one day. You know, I, mm -hmm. and the entire concept of, of how I wanted to make the music. I was watching the Tribe Called Quest documentary, uh, Beats, Rhymes, and Life. And just the way Q-Tip sampled and, and the type of beats that he chose. And then also listening to a lot of Goody Mob Soul Food and uh, Outkast, AT Aliens. There was a certain warmth of right. all the mixes you know there was like density and i'm just talking about the sound quality so mm -hmm. sonically you know i wanted i knew i wanted to capture that sound of like 1994 mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying with with the types of drums i use and everything and so that was the that was the first thing that came to me and i knew the title i knew the the so sonically how i wanted it to come out mm -hmm. and just the more i wrote and the more i prayed on it and the more i uh the more i lived the uh the concept of the album started to unravel mm -hmm. you know to cuz i i can't say that i knew all that stuff about the album when i first right. when i first saw the title right. but the more i wrote it it all just you know Kinda unfolded before place. me yeah everything fell into place so is there is there a track on the album that you can say that's your favorite 
My favorite song on the album right now, you know, because it, it'll change from week to week, mm -hmm. but my favorite one right now is a track called Inspired. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I love it so much, I, I love the, the beat a lot, you know. And um, and I had I added a lot of uh, background vocals on it. You know, that's one thing that I hadn't done a whole lot of beforehand, you know, because normally when I work on albums, I'm by myself, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm doing all the beats, all the, produ you know, all the production, all the recording. You know, I'm just doing all that stuff by myself. But this time I knew I wanted to make it more musical. And rather than trying to duplicate that stuff with, you know, um, just, you know, MIDI software instruments, I wanted to get live instrumentation. I wanted to get real people to sing background vocals. So there's a lot of background vocals on the track. And uh, I even have a, a friend of mine from New Orleans to play the flute on mm -hmm. the track, a girl named Low Key. So. Nice. Yeah. Now, going back to the whole marketing strategy mm -hmm. of it, um, you said it was a seven-week marketing strategy? Yeah, um, exactly. You know, what, what, what did that entail as far as, like, you know, getting out there? Was it through social media or? Um I almost kind of don't want to say it. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. I understand that. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. Um, well, let's go to um, who, who can you say right now is probably, like, some of your favorite artists? Um, I'm a really big fan of Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. I'm a really big fan of Kendrick Lamar, uh, and and really everybody in his camp, the uh, the Black Hippie mm -hmm. camp, TDE, yeah, Absol, Schoolboy Q, um, J Rock, like now I really like the stuff. Would doing. there would you be able to tell any kind of influence on the new album from? No, so this so this Not is just strictly Fifth Child, just just this self. yeah the the album it the album doesn't sound like anything mm -hmm. that that you'll hear today right you know what i'm saying i've I've let uh, several people hear the album and you know i asked them without any prompting i asked them you know what does it sound like what era does it sound like and a lot of people have said like oh yeah it sounds like you know early 90s it sounds like 94 you know some people say some of the beats sound like reasonable doubt mm -hmm. but they hear that warmth that i was shooting for as far as like the the goody mob and outcast sort of thing and as far as the samples and, and the drums that i'm using they hear like the the Q tip tribe called quest influences so yeah this is is definitely um my in interpretation of of that sound you know mm -hmm. now um talking about you know the the whole storyline and the and the way it went where did you find a lot of inspiration for writing those those songs because I mean it, you know it seems like a a huge journey for this guy to go from point A to point B on the album. I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got you. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, no, I, I mean, I, I, most of my writing mm -hmm. is, is, is heavily inspired by my life. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And it may, it may not always be a direct, you know, a direct interpretation of my life, but it's always inspired by either things that I've been through mm -hmm. or things that I've seen because music for me is my therapy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I really don't talk about feelings and stuff like that a lot, you know, just in, in conversation. But all of that comes out in my music, you know. So if you listen to it and really pay attention to my music, you understand a lot Which about it. Which, I mean, I some, to me, like, it's some of the best music that, yeah. I mean, when people, when people are doing projects on, you know, life experiences and you're not centered around hooks or anything, I mean, that, you know, that music right there is, has longevity, in my opinion, you know. Mm. I, I still remember, you know, people in the past that actually talked about real life things that I can still pick up that same album today and listen to it from right. beginning to end. Right. So that's I had, I can't wait for that project to come out. It's gonna be it's gonna be nice. Um, <coughs> merchandise. So you got you got some merchandise out. I do have merch. Um, I have uh, these wristbands. I don't know if they want to get a close up on them or anything like that. But uh, I have these wristbands, Fifth Child, and then my uh, Twitter on the back, uh, at Fifth Child Music. Um, mm -hmm. I have T-shirts, and I, yeah, the T-shirts have um, this slogan that mm -hmm. I, I kind of live by. It's uh, "We ain't local, we just live here," mm -hmm. because I never want to be regarded as a local hip hop artist. Like you wouldn't call, it, you know, Jay Z a local Brooklyn rapper. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I, I consider myself independent, but not local. You know right. what I'm saying? I think that's kind of condescending to a degree and um yeah so i have my t-shirts i have wristbands i have stickers 
of promo CDs. Well, we're going to come back and find out where people can uh, pick up some of those things. Okay. Um, but we're going to take a small break, and we'll be right back with Fifth Child. Violator All-Star DJs. All -Star DJs. Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DB DJ Rain, and we're sitting here with Fifth Child, and we were just talking about the merchandise that you have available, um, promotional stuff. I'm real big on, on the merchandise, so... Tell us again exactly um, what, you, what you got. I know you got bumper stickers, you got the promo bands. Um, what else is there? T-shirts, promo T -shirt. CDs, um, posters. Posters. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't mean to say it like that. <laughs> 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 but uh, okay, so where, where can people pick those up at? Um, for the most part, besides at, at shows, mm -hmm. you know, they can pick them up at Morning Bell Records mm -hmm. in uh, Fondren. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you have any shows coming up? The next show I have coming up is uh, August 16th in New Orleans. And what? And where's that at? Like, uh, uh, like what? Venue? What venue in yeah. New Orleans? You know what? I actually have no idea. No idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have no idea. I got Not it. yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's and that's when? August 16th. August 16th. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> where? Where can people find some of like the older music that you have that you put out? Because I mean, there's five more albums out there too. Right, right. Um, all the music is available at uh, fifthchildmusic.bandcamp.com. Mm -hmm. It's always the number five T H Child Music uh, dot bandcamp dot com. Also, the last three albums are available on iTunes mm -hmm. and Amazon, um, Napster, Rhapsody, you know, all that good stuff. Really, if they if they just Google. Fifth Child, like mm -hmm. with the number five, TH, Fifth Child, then, uh, then they'll find all the links to everything, the stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, uh, all the stuff on the Bandcamp page is available for free download. Okay. And what I've been doing um, the last couple of weeks, now I can tell you this part of the marketing plan because I already did it, mm -hmm. but uh, on my Facebook page, I've been just uh, walking people through the previous releases and kind of explaining to everybody, you know, like where I was at that point in life and, and you know, just reintroducing my, my back catalog to them. Right. Because the project that I'm about to release, Love Letters and Suicide Notes, will not be for free. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it will not be available for free. Um, because, like, I, I work really, really, really hard on, uh, on everything I do. And like I told you, like, I'm producing and, and mixing and mastering all this stuff myself you know and I invest a lot of time and, and money and energy into into my craft you know and I've had ple people for um, years tell me like why are you why are you giving it away you know what I'm saying like this is really good this is quality that we could pay for but you know you're giving it away and for so long I didn't doubt myself but I just doubted people's reaction to my music because I know what's popular mm -hmm. and my music doesn't really sound like uh, what's popular on the radio right now. Right. You know, but uh, I've been getting a lot of really good feedback and, and I think I'm, I'm ready to do that. Um, and it's the same thing with uh, with live performances, you know what I'm saying? I put a lot, I give my all into every show whether it's two people in the audience or 2,000. Mm -hmm. You know, I put my heart into every show but there's really a stigma attached to hip hop music especially in Jackson where a lot of venues really don't if they want to deal with you at all, you know, and have you perform, they definitely don't want to pay you. Mm -hmm. And so in return, you have other venues who are like, okay, well, you rap and you want to do a show, well, you have to pay to get on this showcase or you have to pay to do this, you know, you have to rent out this venue. But I know of people in bands who are like in startup bands, you know what I'm saying, and they get money, they get paid, you know, right. up front, they get guarantees to come perform. But hip hop is kind of like the, uh, the the stepchild of of, uh, of music, especially right. in uh, in this market. And so, if anything, I just want to, um, with my career and with my music, I want to uh, regain that dignity and let people know that this is a true art form, and there we are professional, and we are, you know, very good. We're artists, not just rappers, but we're artists. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is a culture to be respected so right. that's what I try to do with my music so I won't be 
actually I haven't even told anybody until right now but I'm not going to be doing um, any free shows if it if it doesn't have anything to do with uh, like kids and some kind of charity then I'm not just doing a show for free anymore right I mean I, I don't I don't blame you I mean because yeah. I mean you you really worked your 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 tail off I mean the past years I mean with I mean I'm still like in kind of all with the you know the six albums I mean independent I mean that's you know that's more than like we talked earlier than some major label artists have out and you know you're you're doing this stuff by yourself you know your production and and writing and, and all that and I mean it's really an inspiring thing like especially some of these you know up-and-coming young artists that right. you know probably need to know you know what's the next step I need to do or how do I need to handle this you know so the things that you know that we talked about in the interview they, you know, they, they're going to help somebody out there, you know, yeah. understand the process. Right. Cause My intern over there, she needs to understand that process right. too. So. Cause I, like, above all, I just want to, um, I want to really just pursue my, my art and my career, and I want to regain some credibility to the culture mm -hmm. of hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not leave way. it better than you let them. Exactly. Yeah. I want it, I want my environment to be a product of me. Right. Right. That's great. Um, now, Collaborations. I know you're open for collaborations. So if somebody wanted to collaborate with you, how would they get in contact with you? Well, uh, <laughs> um, first of all, I mean, I, I'll do production for, for anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I sell I sell beats. Uh, so if, they, if they're interested in purchasing beats, then they can reach me at my Twitter page, which is uh, at Fifth Child Music, mm -hmm. or they can email me at fifthchildmusic at gmail.com. And that's the number five. The th. No, always the number five, right. never spelled out fifth. Yeah, so the number five th uh, child music. They can reach me that way. As far as collaborations, as, you know, like working with other artists. Um, I'll be honest, I don't really just care to to just work with any and everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, if if there's an artist that I really respect, then I don't have any problem. Right. You know, doing music, but I'm I don't I'm not gonna sit here and lie and just say I just want to make music with everybody in the city because mm -hmm. I don't. I I understand that. Um, one last thing before we gotta go. Mm -hmm. um, once again, give everybody your contact information. Uh, Fifth Child Music mm -hmm. <laughs> at Gmail dot mm -hmm. com. That's uh, the best way to reach me. Uh, or at my Twitter page at Fifth Child Music. Right. Yeah. Uh, and one last thing. Mm -hmm. um, Community service. You were telling me some things earlier about what you have going on uh, yeah. with kids, and I'd, uh, I'd really like for you to get that out. Okay, I'll try to make it quick. Uh, but I teach music at an after school club called Point Dexter Park mm -hmm. After School Club, and um, uh, it's a couple of kids from Point Dexter Elementary, and I teach them how to write songs. And I mean, so they, so they write their own songs, and I make beats for them, they record the songs. Uh, yeah, so I record them with my actual studio equipment, and then I mean they have videos on YouTube, and I've been doing this the past two years. So if, if you go, if you type in Point Dexter Park After School Club on YouTube, then some of the videos that they've done, uh, and they even shot the videos at Howlin' Miles in the Red Room, mm -hmm. so you can see some of the uh, music that the kids have done. And, nice. um, yeah, and so I also teach physical education at a couple of different places. You know, that's that's one thing. Like I told you earlier, that. Um, that stuck in my mind about you when we first met, you know, a few years back was um, the way that you give back to the kids, and and and, and I think that's real important, especially like in in your position because you have that ability and that talent to teach them, you know, the right way to do things, and right. and you know if they want to pursue music, you know, because you're you're a really good example, you know, right. from the project that you've done and the way that you've handled yourself, you know, to interact with these kids and do projects like that so I commend you for that so those are my two biggest passions music and, and kids mm -hmm. so um, like I, I've always said no matter how much I'm doing or how successful I become with music I never want to stop working with kids all together nice yeah. well we're out of time all right I appreciate you coming through thank it you. was a very very informative and thank great you. interview right. um, keep me updated on, on everything that's going on um, Make sure that you tune in for another episode of Exposure TV. September 7th. September 7th. Love Letters and Suicide. Notes. Love Letters and oh, Suicide. iTunes. iTunes. Where else? Local uh, independent record store near you. Right. And check them out. Fifth Child Music.